few things that represent a smidge of perfection. I can confidently say that this was one of those things. This, my friends, is a kosher prime ribeye steak. I've never handled a steak with this much marbling before, so I will be treating it as best as I possibly can. There's no USDA rating for the steak because it is kosher, but I guarantee that this is easily at the level of a prime ribeye, if not better, and I challenge anyone who says otherwise. The steak will be dry brined, which is just the process of salting meat and keeping it in the refrigerator overnight. It accomplishes two things. It allows the salt to infiltrate the meat, resulting in more uniformly seasoned meat, and the removal of excess moisture, resulting in a superior crust. And this step, like so many others, is entirely optional, but as always, I strongly advise it since it results in a superior crust and more flavorful steak. Even if you do not plan on dry brining your steaks, you should always salt steaks liberally. There must be enough salt to season the meat not only on the surface but also the interior. I'm not going to season the sides of the steak because it's a little thin, however thicker steaks such as the tomahawk require seasoning on all sides including the edges. I'm going to put this on a cooling rack to allow for better air circulation before putting it in the fridge. Make sure the steak is not covered so that air can circulate on both sides. If you're a patient, you can put it in the fridge for two hours, but for far, far better results, I recommend leaving it overnight to allow for better salt penetration. Hopefully you took my advice and today is the next day. A dry brine steak has an intriguing texture. To the touch, it resembles beef jerky and the color of the fat will have altered. The steak will now be seasoned with freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. I once heard a professional chef, who I will not name, remark that when it comes to black pepper, it's always best to use the lowest setting. His argument was that the larger pepper pieces will create a gap between your steak and the pan or grill surface, resulting in a poor crust. His logic makes sense in certain ways, however, I've tested both and found no difference. But the smaller setting does in fact make sure that your steak is seasoned more evenly. Make sure to season both sides and rub the edges with the seasoning on the cutting board. 